Welcome to another edition of Jules Voto's Photo Focus. In this video, I'm going to be talking about the deep tone monochrome picture control for the Nikon Z8, which was introduced earlier this year, earlier in 2024, along with firmware 2.0. And I talked a little bit about this in an earlier video. Uh, but I really didn't have real-world photos to show at that time. I just had my standard test setup. So uh, I used the 24 to 200 f4 to 6.3 zoom lens, and I uh, had it set for aperture priority matrix metering. And uh, all these photos were shot in Biloxi, Mississippi, and it gives a different look. This deep tone monochrome picture control. It's uh, more contrasty. Uh, the blacks seem blacker, richer. Um, and I did make some corrections to these, but only density corrections. Some were a little underexposed or in some cases overexposed. So I just made a, um, a fix in Lightroom for that. And uh, I just walked around and shot anything I thought might look good in black and white. And I really like black and white. I have uh, I did an earlier video on shooting black and white with a digital camera. And um, so I thought I would do it again using this deep tone picture control. And a lot of these places that I shot, I have photographed before in color. and. Uh, a lot of them really lend themselves to black and white, like City Hall with this white marble. And I, now this particular shot here, I think it could have used a little more contrast. So I could have punched it up, but I really didn't want to do much with that. I wanted to show what it looks like pretty much out of the camera, other than, as I said, just making some exposure adjustments, either lightening or darkening. And I also made, you know, a little bit of... Um, I did a little bit of cropping as well, and I'm big on arches and repetition. As anybody who has seen any of my videos will know, I shoot a lot of stuff like that. Now, there's a lot of pelicans in Biloxi, and uh, this pelican was hanging out with these two seagulls. And uh, this was at 200 millimeters on the 24 to 200. And the lens is pretty good at, at, uh, at 200 millimeters. It's a little slow at that end. It, it ends up at 6.3. But a lot of these pictures, in fact, most of these pictures you're seeing here were shot at f11. Some were at f8, but most of them were at f11. And I think the deep tone monochrome really works well with this to show the texture of the water. This was early in the morning and, um, you know, I kind of like the way it looks. And as I said, there's a lot of pelicans there. On this particular day, at least there was. I've gone there at other times and there weren't that many. Now this, if you're familiar with Biloxi, this is uh, right down the street from the Hard Rock Hotel Casino. And uh, there's a lot of shrimp boats there. And they go out, uh, I believe, around 7 o'clock at night. And they're back. They stay out all night. And they're back at 5 in the morning. So uh, Biloxi is really big on shrimp. And here's one of the shrimp boats. And I photographed these boats in color many times. I kind of like it in black and white. It gives it a totally different look, a different feel. They're very colorful, these boats, but I think they work in black and white. And uh, I was able to get pretty close to this pelican, but again, I was at 200 millimeters. They seem very patient and uh, are not too scared, at least not as scared as the seagulls. The seagulls seem to take off a little quicker uh, than the pelicans do. And I don't, you know, I don't want to scare them away. They're, you know, I'm intruding on their space. And here again, we have uh, some more of the shrimp boats. And I, I kind of like it in black and white. You know, with black and white, you're more looking at the tone. You're looking at the composition more, the uh, shadows and highlights. 
where with color, of course, the color plays a big part. I believe this boat was red, so that would really stand out in color, but I kind of like it in black and white. And I like what this deep tone picture control does to the skies. It looks like the effect you would get if you had a red filter on if shooting black and white film. So here's that red boat again. And um, I like the way it looks in black and white. I mean, it, it was it looks nice in color too, but I just like the black and white. Now this gentleman, I guess he was relaxing after being out all night uh, looking for shrimp. And uh, I just caught him uh, having a conversation on his cell phone. So I, you will notice I shoot a lot of vertical pictures in addition to horizontal. And I have to really think to do that because a lot of times, I mean, some things just lend themselves to a vertical picture as this does. So there's really not much decision being made. But I think a lot of people, myself included, shoot too many horizontal pictures and not enough vertical shots. Working on a newspaper, I got in the habit of shooting vertical because that's what the editors wanted. They wanted a combination. They wanted that for layout. So you would shoot both horizontal and vertical. Now this one, the contrast is kind of low. I guess I could have boosted it. Like I said, I, um, I didn't want to do that. I wanted to show just what this deep tone monochrome picture control can do without altering it too much, again, other than for density. So this was alongside this church. I have photographed this church before, but this time the gate was open. This was on a Sunday morning, so the gate was open alongside the church, and there's all these statues in this little courtyard. So uh, for the first time, I was able to, to uh, get in there, and I think the deep tone monochrome works really well with some of these images, you know, with the statues being primarily white. Uh, I think that, you know, they really stand out with this picture control. And these were some people leaving that little space alongside the church, heading in for uh, Sunday Mass. And I was, you know, I was set back a bit. I don't like to intrude on people. I don't like to point a camera right in their face. But sometimes people add to these types of pictures, these what I call street type images, where you just kind of walk around and uh, just shoot whatever's happening, whatever you think is interesting. And here someone is just about to close the door heading into the church. Now, this building here coming up, this bell, I believe it's a restaurant, and I have photographed this many times before, but never in black and white. And it's a black and white building, basically. And um, so why not photograph it in black and white, right? I mean, if you shot it in color other than the sky, it would look black and white. So uh, I really like this building. And uh, there were a few bikes parked there. and. I think this deep tone monochrome really renders this really nice. And uh, I take a lot of pictures and sometimes I get kind of carried away, but I'm just looking, I'm trying to find interesting angles, interesting compositions. So I will shoot a lot and then edit later. Now, I know some traditionalists say, well, you know, just uh, don't, no editing later. You know, if, if when you were shooting film, they would make a, a print with the uh, negative carrier filed down around the edges so you could see, so it would print a black border basically around the picture so you could see that that was the entire image that was originally shot. Uh, I see nothing wrong with cropping. I see nothing wrong with shooting a lot and editing later. And, uh, and so that's what I do. Uh, sometimes you'll, you'll take a shot and then you'll say, you know what, maybe it'll look better if I go around over here or go around back or come back later when the lighting is different. So with these images on some of them, I think I would, um, I would do some contrast adjustment. I would play around with them a little more. This one is really flat. 
but some of them, the contrast is great. Of course, that has to do with the lighting, has to do with the sky. Now this here, this could have been taken with a red filter, right? If this was a uh, traditional uh, film, black and white film. Uh, and I used to, when I shot black and white film, I wanted to bring out the sky. I, if I wanted to bring out the clouds, I would use a red filter. Uh, you know, if you didn't need to bring them out that much, you could use a yellow filter, but the red filter would always give you dramatic look in the sky with the clouds. Now this building, this house actually is for sale. Uh, it's a beautiful house. It's huge. And that's another thing that I have photographed many times. I would hate to have to paint this house with all uh, those railings. Uh, but it's a beautiful house. It photographs well. It looks great in black and white. Again, it's primarily black and white. So uh, the shutters are black. The uh, siding is white. The columns and the railings are white. So it looks really good in black and white. And with this deep tone monochrome, it really brought out the sky. So I just walked around the house and got a bunch of shots. And uh, I noticed a reflection in this window. Uh, and, uh, you know, I, th you got to really keep your eyes open and look for things and it doesn't always work, but sometimes it does and you could get some interesting pictures. So I, uh, I think that next time, if I'm ever back in Biloxi, I, I don't know if I'd photograph this house again. I don't know. Maybe I'll try it with something else with, with a, a unique lens or something with a fisheye. I don't know. And this is right near that house uh, again works well in black and white and so let me say a little bit about this 24 to 200 now i have owned it for a little over a year i picked it up in july of 2023 and so i am recording this now in september of uh, 2024 so my next video i'm going to do kind of like a one year plus report on this lens and it's very versatile it's great for travel photography you have every focal length from 24 to 200 no it's not fast it goes from f4 at 24 ends up at 6.3 at 200 but if you have a lot of light or if you're able to shoot at high iso and with the z8 i can uh, I have no trouble shooting a Z8 with 3200, 6400. And, um, you know, with the noise reduction software we have available today, if needed, I could always do that. But the Z8 is really good with high ISO. And I've done some videos on that comparing it to the D700, which is a much older camera that has excellent high ISO. And here's another scene that I photographed many times before these tables. Again, it lends itself to black and white. And I thought this picture really works well in black and white. It's from a 1964 Beatle album that was in the window of a store. And the original picture was black and white. So why not, you know, shoot it today in black and white? So I like this deep tone monochrome picture control. Uh, I would probably use it again. I think I would be more selective in the scenes in which I would use it in. Like this one, I think is kind of flat. Now I could play around with it in Lightroom and brighten it up. Uh, I like this one in deep tone. I like the way this one looks. So it's just another tool in our toolbox. We have so many tools today to choose from, whether it be picture controls with the wide variety of lenses we have, with our mirrorless cameras, we could go back and use old manual focus lenses from the 50s and 60s and just give our images a different look. And one of the great advantages of digital, whether it be mirrorless or DSLR, is this you can shoot and shoot and shoot. And uh, yeah, you got to do a lot of editing later. But with film, you really can't do that today. You have to be much more selective in what you shoot because of the high cost of film and then, of course, processing and so forth. So 
I recommend experimenting. If you have an Icon Z8, experimenting with the tone picture control and let me know what you think. So please leave your comments or questions in the comments below. I try to respond to all comments and all questions. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I publish a new video every Monday morning and Wednesday morning at 11 a.m. Eastern Time. So I will talk to you next time.